Okay, so we're going to go just over the ventricles, and so it's various pieces of the actual um, human brain model section in your lab. You're going to need to know all of the different ventricles, so the lateral ventricles, the third ventricle, and then the fourth ventricle. This model is a little bit weird because you want to understand that it sits like this in the brain. It's almost tilted, too, because it should sit more down like this. It's an, it's an odd little model, but it is what we have. Okay, the lateral ventricles are going to run underneath the cerebrum and down and around the thalamus. So the two lobes of the thalamus would sit right in here. So all we can see of it on a half brain is we can see the area where it would be, which would be behind the septum pellucidum here. So if we were to cut this flap of tissue, we would actually find a space that we could put our force up in here and feel around and sort of see what we felt. Um, there would be a fairly deep space in which the cerebrospinal fluid would sit. Then that cerebrospinal fluid comes down and this is our, the thalamus, the very middle of it. And remember that it's this very big one. Two lobe structure. So this is what the thalamus actually looks like. It's very large because this is our major relay station right in the brain. It's going to in relay information coming up from the body out to the appropriate portion of the cerebrum. And so, but all we see in the middle of it is the point where it joins together. So if we take this thalamus and we open it up, this is all we see that joins it. Now running right around the edge of it here, Okay, and running around here, we would find another space that we could insert our pointer into. That's the third ventricle. And so that's what we're seeing here, this portion. It even shows you the hole where the two sections of the thalamus actually do communicate with one another. So there's a piece of thalamus going through that little hole. And then what happens is it needs to travel down to where the cerebellum is. It travels down through the intervertebral foramen. Or no, wait, do you call it, call it something else? Let me make the interventricular foramen, sorry, vertebral. <laughs> interventricular foramen. So this is what it here. And then the other thing is um, the actual fourth ventricle. This is what it looks like from the side, okay, getting uh, cerebrospinal fluid to the um, cerebellum and also over to the brain stem. This is what it looks like all together. It kind of looks like the star at the bottom. So this is fourth ventricle. This is that space where we can tra have spinal fluid traveling down from the third ventricle down to the fourth. To sure, I mean, may even call it something else. So spinal fluid something. So something canal. Canal, yeah. Why am I completely going blank? Doesn't matter. Y'all will figure it out. Let me find it on here. Should be... There we go, cerebral aqueduct or cerebral canal. One more time, cerebral aqueduct. Sorry, brain fart. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so what happens is in here, and we don't have our other models, there are areas, especially close to the third ventricle, where we actually produce the cerebrospinal fluid, and then it's going to travel up and around this area, down the third ventricle, all the way out. Now this fourth ventricle hooks up to the central canal that would run all the way down the spinal cord. So we're going to get it running down there. And then it's going to come up and around through that space, the subarachnoid space, all the way up and around over the top of the brain and then out through the articular granulations, the arachnoid granulations. Jesus. Okay? And so then it's going to return to venous circulation. It's produced at the rate of about 150 mils three times a day for about 500 mils. Um, a, a day that you produce and you keep in the cerebrospinal fluid um, area. Yeah, so that's about it for that one. Okay.